Hello and welcome to Fully Charged. Now, GridServe, GridServe, GridServe. There's been a lot of buzz in the press about GridServe's electric forecourt in the last few days. It wasn't only our world exclusive that proved popular, but this story went far and wide ahead of the official opening, and deservedly so. So the potential to charge 36 electric cars at the same time on rapid chargers was just too tempting not to take up. So last week, along with many other electric car drivers, we went back to GridServe to all experience what we called a chargegasm. Now, I just want viewers to know I did not come up with that term. Now, unlike the first time we filmed at uh, the GridServe's charging hub, uh, went in lovely bright sunshine, this time it was a horrendous storm with sleet, with rain, it was freezing cold, it was dark, it was really horrible. But here's the important thing, all the chargers still worked. So here's what some of the other people who joined us at the Electric Forecourt thought about this and the, what this represented regarding the future of electric transportation. Hi, I'm Craig from Electric Zoo. I've come to GridServe today to see the Electric Forecourt, which is absolutely amazing. I'm Linda Gray from EV Driver. Um, I do consultancy work for people who are looking at EV charging infrastructure. And I was invited here today to this incredible um, facility. I mean, it's, it's beyond belief. I've got to say, this is an absolutely fantastic facility. I'm just so excited to be here. I just couldn't not. Yeah, it's so no. monumental. It is. This is the future. This is how things should be. It's easy. It's sheltered. There was space to walk my dog back there. There's good coffee. Um, yeah, this is the future. This is how. This is how. This is what we want. This is what we should see, be seeing hopefully everywhere. I also managed to catch up with CEO Toddington Harper to see how things went from GridServe's perspective. So Toddington, I'd imagine that you're quite happy, I'm hoping, with the way today has gone, because this is a bit of a special, pivotal moment. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm absolutely over the moon. The, uh, the thing that kind of makes me happy, I was asked about this, is, um, is the fact that we're actually making a difference. And yeah. you know, the people who are, are here today, are the ones that really care. They're the ones who kind of get in there early, and they're, they're opinions that I really wanted to, to see what people thought of it. And so having people, you know, so enthusiastic about this, you know, really wanting to get behind it, support it, uh, and you know, just get intuitively why we're doing what we're doing, it's just fun. Well, and I also think it's. I mean, I'm really pleased that you really push the kind of message that, in a sense, to the kind of commercial community, to the business community, that we have to do something about this. It's all well and good going, blah, 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 you know, we look at our greenwash, but you know, you're actually saying, no, this has got to be done like this, and we have to push, you know, push the technology to the limit, which is what you're doing. We have to put technology to the limit, and, and the, the really, you know, frightening thing, really, is if, if you look at the data from, that comes out of the UN, I mean, it's all a bit difficult to kind of understand what it all means, but there's this kind of visualization I look at a lot, it's called the Mercator Climate Clock, and it sort of ticks down ominously it says you know if you would if you produce this much you know this many tons of carbon if you emit this many into the atmosphere temperatures are going to rise by a certain amount and, and effectively we've got uh, about seven years and one month last time i looked at it which was last week uh, before we'll have enough carbon in the atmosphere that temperatures are going to go beyond one and a half degrees of warming and that's when it goes really out of control and it's under 25 years for two degrees so so we just don't really have like no one like my kids can't yeah. do anything about that, yeah. you know. And uh, unless people who can doing, you know, who have the option today to do something about it are doing something yeah. about it, yeah. then uh, you know, no one else is really going to have that opportunity. I can't wait to, to see these all over the country. Uh, this is going to just completely revolutionise how easy it is for people to do long journeys. Uh, I think this is amazing. If you compare this to any other infrastructure that we've got in the UK, it's number one. And I don't think anything will surpass this for a long time. We felt lucky enough to come here today to see the opening. Um, amazing. There can't be any naysayers out there now given this offering. It's an absolute solution um, and it ticks all the boxes. I'm really impressed with it. What's going to happen? You know, in like your, your, your kids and your grandkids, and you know, 20, 30 years time, where the dust has settled, to, so to speak. And someone says, "So, when you knew that, yes, yes. you know, did you, did you when it, what did you do? Yeah. When you knew it, when it was clear, yeah. and the scientists were saying, and the planet was warming, and this was that, and there were feedback loops were going to happen. What did you do? Yeah. 
you know, and I, and I used to sort of say to myself, you know, I did everything I could and it wasn't enough. But the w weird thing about this year is, is uh, it's actually COVID, you know, even though it was like just obviously a horrendous thing to kind of go through, it, it made me sort of sit up and go, wait a second, people just stopped. <laughs> people just stopped, you know, everything stopped and changed like overnight. And I thought, wow. So people can actually stop, you know, the world can change. Yeah. If there's a problem that people think is a big enough problem, uh, and, and that's what people need to get, that it is a big enough problem. It's not a, you know, it's a slow one, but a bigger problem than, than, than this. Then they actually can do something about it. And the good news is, is it's not going to cost politicians their, their jobs because they have to commit their economies to losing loads of money. It's actually gone reverse since yeah. then. It's cheaper to do this. Wanna, it's yeah. better to do it. Yeah. You can do it now. It works. The solutions work. You're cheaper than petrol and diesel. Um, and fortunately, we have got time. You know, it hasn't, it hasn't, hasn't happened been yet. So anyway, we, we need to make it work. We need to make it happen. And uh, we need to deliver. And that's what we actually, we summarize that in like a, yeah. this, you know, hashtag deliver, yeah. which is trying to summarize all of that in like yes. one word. Yeah. You know, so what do we need to do? Or we need to get on with it. Well, how do you do that? Uh, deliver. and all the cars charging at the same time, I'm just super, super impressed. Seeing this, making EVs become more mainstream, seeing solar being promoted, I couldn't not support it, couldn't not come. And I just can't believe how quick they've actually done it. I think it's about time we had this around the UK and the promises of, I think, 100 sites over the next five years. <laughs> just what everyone needs. So that's proof positive that the electric forecourt works whatever the weather. And it's officially open now, so I'm sure Toddington and the GridServe team would be delighted to see you. You can find it at Edison Way, Great Notley, Braintree in Essex. And if you use What Three Words, which is a brilliant app, the three words you need are spun.texts, T-E-X-T-S, dot tabloid. Spun.text.tabloid on What Three Words will get you right to the entrance. We will be back at GridServe again shortly to film the final four fixtures of the EV World Cup. And to be perfectly honest, I can't wait.